Now to what happened in Moscow today. 6,000 guests witnessed the most extravagant ceremony. Vladimir Putin took oath of office. The 65-year-old president was inaugurated, as they put it, for the fourth time at the iconic Kremlin Palace in Moscow. As the Kremlin Palace clock struck 12 noon in Moscow, the now fourth-time president, Vladimir Putin, opened Russia's doors to the world. Amidst cheering dignitaries at the palace and millions watching across the globe, the man who has led Russia for 14 years walked up to the podium to take charge once again. After the oath, it was time for the president to address the nation and the world. Our entire society, each one of us, will have to pull this way together. All, all the people who care about Russia should come together. We need to achieve a breakthrough in all the different areas of life. And I strongly believe that only a free society that is open to new things can do that. There were a few firsts also preceding the ceremony. Ditching imported vehicles, Putin this time around switched to a new Russian-made limousine to arrive at the Kremlin Palace. The 7th of May 2018, going down memory lane for Putin, Russia and the world. The day Russia got its new old president. Bureau Report, we on. He's defeated foes at home and abroad to emerge as one of Russia's most powerful leaders. Former KGB agent Vladimir Putin has come a long way since he assumed presidency 18 years ago. He's eliminated opposition at home. He's punched big on the global stage. He's made powerful enemies by annexing Crimea, launching a crucial intervention in Syria and allegedly meddling in elections in the U.S. Here's a profile of the man the West loves to hate. Thirty first December nineteen ninety nine. As the world counted down to the new millennium, forty seven year old Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin walked into the Kremlin as the president of Russia. It was a different era. Bill Clinton was the United States president, Jiang Zemin ruled China. Saddam Hussein was alive and the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York were still standing. But in the last 18 years and counting, Putin so cemented his hold on power that he has become synonymous with Russia. Between 2008 and 2012, when Putin stepped down to become Prime Minister to President Dmitry Medvedev, no one was in doubt as to who ruled Russia. Putin's Russia today is a far cry from the one he inherited as a former KGB spy-turned-politician. Since the last Russian presidential election in 2012, Putin has militarily intervened in the Ukraine and annexed Crimea. Putin has injected Russia back into the new great game in West Asia by propping up Bashar al-Assad of Syria. And what's more, Putin is credited with installing Donald Trump in the White House. On the flip side, personal and press freedoms in Russia are in peril. Dissent is not tolerated. The Russian economy is not doing as well as he would like it to. And increasingly, Putin resembles an authoritarian, czar-like figure. In 2013, his approval ratings dropped to their lowest level in the 13 years since he came to power. But even then, he remained the lone politician of consequence in Russia. 
Putin makes no bones about his desire to see Russia regain its preeminent position in world affairs. He said as much in his 2000 inauguration speech. We must not forget anything. We need to know our history, know it for what it is, draw lessons from it, always remember those who created the Russian state, defending his dignity made him a great, powerful, mighty state. In the same speech, Putin also said, I can assure you that in my work I will be guided only by the interests of the state, but there may well be mistakes. The mistakes Putin may have made in the last 18 years and how much they cost Russia and the world will only be known in the fullness of time. Tamesh Ramachandran, Vion. Joining us now is uh, Vion's correspondent from Moscow, Julia Lyubova. Good evening, Julia. Uh, a gilded hall, 6,000 guests, all the pomp and pageantry that we saw today. Is this inauguration ceremony a reflection of the power that Vladimir Putin now wields in Russia? Yes, indeed. It was a lavish ceremony at the uh, Kremlin uh, earlier today. And uh, of course, it was attended by thousands of guests. That included some VIPs, public figures, politicians, and even a Hollywood star, Steven Seagal, who is now a Russian citizen. So all this glitz and glamour at the Kremlin earlier, all of that was for Vladimir Putin for his inauguration ceremony. So indeed, Vladimir Putin has a firm grip on power in Russia. But of course, not everybody agrees with that. Uh, just this weekend, hundreds of arrests were made at uh, protests across Russia. Uh, opposition figures Alexei Navalny led a protest in Moscow. And uh, those people accuse Vladimir Putin of corruption and say and call him a tsar, say that he's been in power for too long. Uh, Vladimir Putin has already been in, in charge of Russian power uh, for 18 years, either as president or as prime minister. And now he will be in charge for another six years. In his address after taking oath, uh, President Putin called for a quote-unquote breakthrough to boost Russian economy. Is that his biggest and most immediate challenge now? Yes, indeed. The Russian economy is a, a huge challenge for Vladimir Putin. In his inauguration ceremony, he promised to improve the lives of ordinary Russians. He promised to serve the Russian people, to safeguard rights and freedoms and to protect Russian sovereignty. And indeed, the Russian economy, that's been uh, Vladimir Putin's election promise. Uh, even during his State of the Nation address earlier this year, he promised to raise living standards, to make housing more affordable and to help those in need. And uh, millions of people in Russia live below poverty line, so indeed that help is needed. But the question is just how uh, Vladimir Putin going to do this? The Russian economy has been hit very hard with Western sanctions and with low oil prices. So indeed it is a mammoth task for Vladimir Putin and the government. He's 65 years old. He's now in office for a six-year term. Will this be his last? Well, indeed, that remains to be seen. Uh, but the end of this, uh, this fourth term, uh, Vladimir Putin would have been in power uh, of Russia for almost a quarter of a century. Uh, but, of course, uh, he's uh, highly popular in Russia. In, his, in this election campaign, he won more than 70% of the votes. And there is indeed no serious opponent to Vladimir Putin and no serious contender to replace him. Uh, even the uh, popular opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, well, he's, he was banned from uh, running for the election campaign and it's unlikely that he will be able to enter the uh, politics stage in Russia. So indeed, that remains to be seen just what will happen at the end of this six-year term. Indeed. Uh, Julia Lyubova, thanks very much for joining us live from Moscow this evening. Vladimir Putin is back in office for his fourth term as president. He is... Uh, in the Russian presidential office, the world is watching. Very soon there will be a new cabinet in place. Experts and critics alike are putting their money on the new cabinet to be a stavka. Literally, that means a war cabinet. But in light of the recent US sanctions on Russia, Putin may need to bite the bullet. He may want to ease the Kremlin's ties with the White House. The first sign of his appease West approach could be the fact that Dmitry Medvedev has been retained as prime minister. It's worth mentioning here that the two forces in Russia's politics are now looking to have a common thread. The Eurasians speak for a multipolar world, what Putin has, was seen as a proponent to, and then there are the Atlanticists 
who want Russia to be accepted by the West as an equal partner. This is something that Putin, this time around, seems to be willing to experiment with. Not just that, there are reports that Vladimir Putin is considering the appointment of the former Minister of Finance, Alexei Kudrin, to high office. Kudrin may get a post in the presidential administration and assume Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev's economic powers. The reshuffle might contribute to restoring Russia's relationship with the West and in turn, strengthening the country's economy.